dinner table. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because a lot of Black people in this country, a lot of minorities, that is a way of life for us. Navia's Autonom shuttle has a variety of safety features, including safety belts and emergency stop buttons. I am a millennial. I don't like being away from my phone. I mean, it sounds drastic, but it's kind of like your air supply has been cut off. When you leave your phone at home, it's tough. It includes the $25 billion already secured during this year's legislative session. Carmela's team just knew they could put the mask to good use. But I spoke to a couple people who live and work in Newark who say they aren't really feeling a difference. And my boyfriend personally is great with managing yeah. money, and that makes me feel better at the end of the day. Now, do you I have to ask, like speaking of video, yeah. I saw on your Instagram you posted like, a week ago or so, yeah. Oprah and Gail, Never Have I Ever. Yes. What was that like? Oh my gosh. Convincing them to do OG that? OG Chronicles <laughs> is my baby. The man has been charged with setting Sunday's massive fire in Bound Brook, New Jersey. Jane Burnett was downtown to check out the ongoing cleanup efforts. 28-year-old Juan Hector Padilla of Boundbrook was charged with second-degree aggravated arson and third-degree hindering investigation apprehension false information. He was taken to the Somerset County Jail and was awaiting a detention hearing. An NJ Transit passenger shot dramatic video of the flames on Sunday night from South Boundbrook. Here at the site, a retired firefighter told me what the blaze was like. It was just brought back a lot of memories and stuff like that as a firefighter. And I, and I know how it is fighting fires. It's not easy. It's very dangerous. Ronald Daniel said half the people on his street had to evacuate. Although he didn't have to, he said he was at most a few hundred feet away. I mean, it's, it's crazy because this town is always getting some kind of bad luck, you know what I mean, with the floods a couple years ago, then this fire here, like, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's just, you know, see, you see these people every day, now they, you know, a lot of them are displaced, no way to live. Sunday's seven alarm fire burnt buildings to a crisp and left parts of the area under rubble. The fire burned near the Boundbrook NJ Transit Station Sunday, and Raritan Valley Line service That's was temporarily crazy. suspended between Bridgewater and Dinellon. Although service was restored Monday, parking at the station was restricted because of the investigators and cleanup crews in the westbound lot. An NJ Transit spokesperson told me extra parking is available at Bridgewater and Dinellon stations for riders with current Boundbrook monthly passes, and they're working on more locations. Had to get dropped off because the section of the parking lot is closed off because of the fire. Uh, what happened the, this weekend? New Jersey Transit has cut that off, so there's a lot of limited parking right now. Uh, besides that, everything is up to schedule and everything's moving, so there's no real delays. In Boundbrook, New Jersey, I'm Jane Burnett for Chasing News. As New York reopens, social distancing is top of mind, especially if you're getting ready to get back on the train. In tonight's commuter check, Jane Burnett gets a veteran Long Island Railroad rider's reaction to new technology aimed at helping you protect your space on the rails. Customers can now see in real time loading information for each of our M7 or M9 cars in service. Prior to the pandemic, we, we were faced with record ridership and knew we needed innovative ways to manage crowding on our trains. Customers waiting on a platform can now open the Train Time app and see on their phones just how full or empty each car is on their approaching train. They can see if there's a car with free space somewhere else along the train, and while they're waiting at the station for their train to arrive, they can move along the, tra the platform to that car. LIRR officials announced Tuesday that the app got other major upgrades, including real-time train location and push notifications for track announcements at Penn Station, Jamaica Station, and Atlantic Terminal. The agency said this is the first time a railroad in North America has provided the capacity tracking feature. Although LIRR rider Geraldine Canella says she has had a positive experience commuting to work at a hospital in the city throughout the pandemic. I was wondering as I, lately as I've been on the railroad, how when people start to come back from work, how will the Long Island Railroad look? How will, it can't go back to what it was. She had a mixed reaction to the refreshed app, which she's used for years. So if it's too crowded, what does that mean? You don't get on, you wait for the next train, then you'll be late for work. But Canella still plans to use Train Time's new features. But I do think that the railroad has to consider based on how people come back to work, that they may have to add on certain uh, train lines, extra trains during during those busy hours. The only saving grace may be that people are a lot of, more people will be working from home. The MTA did confirm the LIRR added trains during rush hour to avoid overcrowding during the pandemic. You can update your train time app through the App Store and Google Play or download it there if you don't already have it. 
The MTA also announced Monday that it will bring experts together to investigate recurring problems with the R-179 subway fleet and will take the cars out of service. I'm Jane Burnett for Chasing News. In tonight's Chasing the Good, Jane Burnett introduces you to a young Broadway star from New Jersey raising money for the entertainment community. It's going really well. We raised about $600, $700. Suri Marrero is a 10-year-old actress from Bridgewater working with friends to raise money online during the pandemic shutdown. There's no cutoff date. We're kind of just like raising as much money as possible. They're trying to help those across the industry, including in TV, film and on Broadway. It's everywhere, on stage, backstage, um, just everybody in the entertainment industry because entertainment is something we have in our lives and when it's kind of like closed down, like what do you do? Marrero is fundraising for the Broadway Cares slash Equity Fights AIDS COVID-19 Emergency Assistance Fund. Broadway producers are also doubling donations up to $1 million. Check out the Broadway star's Instagram at Suri Marrero to donate at the link in her bio. She made her Broadway debut playing young Nala in The Lion King at age 8. And before the pandemic cut things short, she played young Elsa in Frozen, the Broadway musical. Yeah, Lion King, I had the like Nala ears and the costume was so pretty. It was handmade. It was beat it. It was really cool to like put it on and not feel like Surrey, feel like young Elsa and feel like young Nala. I kind of just switch into their lives. Frozen isn't returning when Broadway reopens, but Marrero is auditioning and taking singing lessons during her summer break from school. Ever since I was a little kid, I was singing, dancing and acting and I still have a passion for it, so I just want to continue doing that, see where it takes me. You can also catch her on Netflix in John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch, a children's musical I comedy never. special. I'm Jane Burnett for Chasing News.